Hello, I'm Guy, and this is Guy Robot. Hello, so this is the second in a two-part video about the build I've done for my virtualized router. While I was setting up this virtual router, there were a few things I needed to configure. I needed to get VLAN set up in ESXi, and I needed to get iSCSI set up working and configured with a new data store. So I thought I would do a detailed video rather than just a quick run through of how I've done those individual parts. If you haven't already seen it, you might want to watch the video I've done on a general ESXi setup and this build specifically to give some context. In this video, I'm going to run through setting up iSCSI, setting up VLANs, what VM kernel NICs are, managing the data store, and then dealing with changing MAC addresses to do kind of a live migration between two completely unrelated virtual machine hosts, one Hyper-V and one ESXi all running an open sense router. Let's go. So the first thing we want to do is set up our networking. As briefly said at the start, we're going to be using both the network ports in this. We're going to be having four different iSCSI IP addresses, one corresponding to each of the different listening IPs that the server itself has. And we're going to have another connection going to my cable modem because we can't do a direct cable linking this and my modem because i want to be able to easily swap between them we're going to do that using a vlan so the first thing we need to do is go down to networking and then go over to virtual switch now this is the default configuration and we want to add extra virtual switch you can do this a number of ways you can have multiple cards tied to one switch depends on how your topology of the network wants to be i'm going to actually add a second virtual switch i'm going to call this one v switch one and I'm going to have the uplink for it to be VMNIC1, which is the second network adapter. So we have now got these two different switches, and at the moment, each of these ties directly to one network card. What we need to do now is add a IP address for each of the iSCSI IPs that this ESX host will use. So we go to vKernel NICs, and a VM kernel NIC is, in effect, an IP address that VMware itself uses for something rather than a guest operating system. So it can use it for, in a big production network, it can use it for something like vMotion, where you can move a VM from one host to the other while it's running. All I'm going to use it for is for iSCSI. So we just do add VM kernel NIC. We're going to create a new port group. We're going to have one, each port group is going to be on the iSCSI VLAN. So we're going to call the first one iSCSI 1. We're going to put it on vSwitch 0. And we're going to call that on VLAN 2, which is my iSCSI VLAN. And IP settings, I'm going to give it a static IP address, and it's going to be 192.168.1.52. And how I have my iSCSI IPs is 192.168, then 12304, and then the corresponding number that matches to the host on the normal subnet. And then all of these are going to be slash 24. And then the rest of this, you leave blank. Say, so if you're doing other things, vMotion, provisioning, fault tolerance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you can tell it that an IP is for this. So out of the box, when you specify an IP during setup, it will be ticked for management as well. But because all we're doing at iSCSI, all we need to do is give port group a name, a VLAN, and an IP. We're going to repeat that as well for the second iSCSI one. So we're going to call that one iSCSI 2. We're also going to put that on vSwitch 0. Same VLAN ID. And again, we're going to do static. This time, 192.168.2.52. Create that one. And then we repeat the process. But for the next two, for iSCSI 3 and iSCSI 4, I'm actually going to create them on the second switch so that we've spread this across the two virtual switches. But other than that, we're going to do exactly the same concept. And finally, do exactly the same one for iSCSI 4, put it on vSwitch 1, VLAN again, and give it an IP address. Now, the important thing to note here is that these, each of the network cards for the virtual switches go into different physical switches for a degree of redundancy. And both of those physical switches have been configured to allow this iSCSI VLAN to be transmitted from them. Default traffic normally goes on the host network, but the uplink ports from ESXi host are able to transmit the iSCSI and also the modem link. So that's the next thing we need to do is support for the modem. Now, we don't need an IP address for the VMware host for the modem. All we need to do is have a connection to the VLAN that the host can use. So we go into port groups, we go into add port groups, and we're going to call this one modem, give it VLAN 3, and we're going to also pop that one on vSwitch 1. If we go and look at virtual switches, we can see we've got our virtual switch 0, which has two of the iSCSI networks, the management for the whole device, and one physical adapter. And we can also go into vSwitch 1, and on this one we can just see that we've got two iSCSIs and the modem VLAN again. And at the moment, the only connected things, because we haven't got any virtual hosts, are any of the VM kernel IPs. Now at this point, it's probably worth showing 
just to prove that this works. So if we go into our host, now in our VMware host, what we can now do is ping 192.168.4.10, for example, and that should have actually worked, but we're not getting a ping back. The reason that's happened is because I've actually got these VLANs set up wrong. So this is a good demonstration of VLAN. If you've not used them before, VLANs totally segregate network. It's like having separate switches. So I've actually put the numbers in wrong. My VLAN two is the modem and my VLAN three is for iSCSI. So I can fix that easily enough because this is all nice and software defined. So if we then go in, modify iSCSI 1, and we change its VLAN to be 3, then we just go back and repeat that process really quickly for all the other ones, changing all of the iSCSI VLANs to be 3, and changing the modem VLAN to be 2. And with that done, hopefully if I tab back to SSH, we should be able to rerun that ping. Excellent, we get a response from 1, 2, 3, and four, which means all of our iSCSI networking is now up and running. And our networking for the modem is done as well. So with our networking on the host set up, what we now want to do is actually set up the iSCSI. So if we go into storage and we go into adapters, there's a button here, configure iSCSI. So the first thing to do is we turn iSCSI on. So I've got a host name here, which I can then put in the configuration on the free NAS. What I'm gonna do first of all is say that we do want to use authentication for this. So I'm gonna put use chat and I'm going to use a shortened version of the name for authentication. So I'm just gonna use the host name and then I'm gonna put in my password there. I'm then going to add port bindings. This is really important. So what you want to do is add all four of your iSCSI ports in here. If you don't have multiple paths to an iSCSI host, so say you've only got one IP on your iSCSI server, then it will work, but you'll get a warning saying that uh, it's not at its maximum health level because there's no redundancy there. Once that's done, I'm gonna do an added dynamic target. So a static target is me telling VMware the exact configuration for it. Dynamic target, I just give it an IP and it finds all possible routes to it, which is just less configuration effort. So I'll do 192.168.1.10 for the IP address of my NAS host. Gonna hit save configuration. And what we'll need to do here quickly is go over to my NAS, go into services. Now I did do a quick test of this earlier on, so it may well be that I've already got this configured, but we just wanna go into targets and make sure that we've got the correct host name there for the one that's been generated. So if I do a refresh here now, we have now see that we've got our iSCSI adapter. We go back into configure iSCSI, copy the host name, put it in there. And then we've now configured my NAS to point there. All the rest of the setup on the NAS is done just as it was in my last video for configuring iSCSI. The only difference here is I've actually got a really big six terabyte VM host partition. I'm gonna use it for the first time here, but it's gonna be shared between multiple VM hosts. So you can actually have two different or three different or unlimited VM hosts all using the same physical disk. And when we've come back in here as well, you will see that we've now also got these static targets here. That's because from the IP address, it's gone and it's found all the different things on that VM host for us. So we now go to devices, and at the moment, all we've got is the internal disk. So if we hit rescan and then refresh, and then you see that the six terabyte device has appeared in the list. So this just appears as a completely empty six terabyte desk when it comes to ESXi. And if we look at the partition table, you'll see for the moment it's a completely empty disk. We've done nothing with it. So we can click new data store. We're gonna call this one iSCSI shared VMs, select the six terabyte disk, use the full disk and click finish. Now that's only when you do it on the first host. So that will now have configured that as a six terabyte data store which can be used on all my VM hosts. The data store has now been created and we can now see it here. So we've got a non-SSD six terabyte data store. And with that, we are ready to start creating VMs. First thing I'm gonna do is create the router. Now I've got two options here. One is to move the VM image from my Hyper-V running on my desktop machine, convert it to a VMware image and run it here. The other is to install a new router and just put the configuration on there. I'm gonna go for the latter because when I was running my router as a physical device, it had 128 gig disk in there. And when I created VM from it, I just imaged the whole disk because I needed to get something up and running quickly. If I want to back that up now, what I'm gonna do is end up with 128 gig image again, which I have to transfer over the network. Gonna to take too long, I don't need it. And it's probably gonna be quicker to do a fresh install. So we're gonna go into virtual machines, create a new virtual machine. Gonna call this one GTP NPT RTB01. It's going to be 
other operating system and it's going to be FreeBSD64 because I'm putting OPN Sense on here, which is a fork off. Going to store it on the iSCSI shared VMs. When we get to customize, I only need one CPU in there, one gigabyte of RAM, an 8 gig hard disk, which is the default is absolutely fine for OPN Sense. I am, however, going to add a second network adapter. We're going to disconnect the one from the modem for the moment, and I'm just going to have one connected to VM network. So the first network card is going to be on my normal host network, which I can use as my router, and the second network card is going to be connected straight to my modem. Disconnect that for now because I've already got my real route there and I don't want two machines to end up trying to fight over it. The only other thing that's really important for me to do, because I want to have a seamless migration between the two of them, what I actually need to do is make sure that the MAC address, which is the physical identifier of the network card, is the same in this virtual machine as it is in my current virtual machine. And that will mean that when I switch from one VM to the other, it should be flawlessly detected across the network almost instantly. So to do that, the first thing I need to do is go into my Hyper-V configuration, go into the settings for my router here, look at my network card. I've got two network cards again, very similar configuration. As you can see here, we've got, that one's got 0015 5D 01DD 02, and this one is exactly the same, but with 03 at the end. So make a note of that, go back into VMware, and then we can set the two different MAC addresses. And that should allow flawless migration between both of them. So now that's done, we hit next, hit finish, virtual machine's been created. Just realized the one thing I forgot was to actually give it a CD-ROM drive so that I can attach an ISO and install OPN Sense. So again, we just want to do add other device, CD-ROM drive. We're going to connect it to a data store ISO file. And I've already got the OPN Sense ISO uploaded. And now we can go in, start the virtual machine. At this point, we just go through an OPN Sense installation. There's not a lot to do here. I'm not going to do any of the other configuration on OPN Sense because I'm going to restore a config file. So all I'm going to do is let this run through super quickly. And within five minutes, it's installed. So what we now need to do is just give it an IP address on my actual network so we can quickly access it. Default password is OPN Sense. Helps if you actually type that in correctly. Once we've done that, we want to just go set the IP of the interfaces, set the LAN IP address, and we're going to give that 10.0.1.94. 24-bit subnet. And it's currently got an upstream gateway. So at this point, we should now be able to ping it. Can't ping it, so what we now need to do is just double check that the configuration for the interfaces are right. So after we created the VM, the network card seemed a bit messed up. It created them on the wrong network. Sometimes this new web configuration gets a little confused. So the easiest thing I'm going to do here to try and remove the issue is remove the network cards from the host. And while I'm at it, I might as well remove the CD-ROM drive since we don't need it anymore. Then once I've removed the network cards, again, to keep this simple for now, I'm going to go back and just add one of the network adapters and leave it connected to the VM network for now. And for now, I'm just going to leave it with an automatic MAC address. So let's power that on. and Hopefully we'll be able to get this time into a working configuration. There we are. We're in this time. We're pinging. Something had gone wrong with the network card creation, but we're OK now. We've deleted those. So there's a couple of bits of configuration I want to do, first of all, before I restore the config. So once we know it's pinging, the next thing we want to do is navigate to it and log in. Once we're logged in, we want to install the packages for VMware tools. But to do that, we first of all need to set up a couple of basics because at the moment this isn't really online properly. So we go into system and general. We put in a DNS server and tell it which gateway to use. Then hit save. And once we've got the DNS server done, Although we've told that to use a gateway, what we probably want to do is set a default gateway in the shell. The reason for that is it's meant to have two interfaces because it's a router. We've currently only set up one on it. So let's just do a quick bit of hacking on the command prompt. So if we do go into the shell and do root at default 10.0.1.1, ping the DNS servers and also ping google.com. So at this point, we should hopefully be able to just type in on the command prompt, pkg install os-vmware we want to carry on. It will then find all the packages that are required for it and install them automatically. There are VMware packages available directly from VMware. The problem with those ones is they have a whole bunch of prerequisites that are difficult to get installed on a little small router and I also don't want them on there since this is meant to be a minimal footprint. So at that point it's done and you see immediately it comes with VMware tools saying yes, guest managed and that they're running. So at this point, we are good to restore the config for our router. So we can do that by going back into our 
web interface, going into configuration and going into backups. Then we do choose file, select our backup and hit restore configuration. Now, while this is going on, it's worth us watching the console because as soon as this actually turns off, we want to kill the power to it and add the second network card back in. Here we are, killed it before it's rebooted, go into edit settings. Now, at this point, we want to add our network adapter back in for the modem one. We want to go back and set its manual address and we want to do the same on the VM network one. So I'm going to save that start the virtual machine and it's worth noting actually before I do that I've still got the router running on Hyper-V and I've got pings running over here so if I start the virtual machine technically I should probably disconnect the network adapters first but we're only going to have a bit of downtime here as we see that one starting up we see there was a drop packet there where things got a bit confused for a second we pause the router on Hyper-V the router is now running on VMware and as you can see traffic is now flowing happily between them so we've just done a live swap from the router running on Hyper-V to a completely fresh install of the router running on VMware. We can then close the Hyper-V window, close our consoles and pings, and the last thing that we want to do, which I already did off camera, was set the auto start of this. So we do auto start increase priority, make sure that it's going to be the first thing to start. And that's it. We've got our router configured. After this point, if I go on to my other virtual machine host as well, which is the one I configured in a previous video, you'll see that the six terabyte disk appears here. If I go into data stores, we can actually see that the shared six terabyte one is there and we actually have access to everything on that shared virtual machine. So if we do get any other problems in the future with a VM host dying or my router dying, then I can actually bring that entire virtual machine up and online on the other VM host, which is nice and easy. And depending on how I configure that, whether I have uh, actually sharing the virtual machine state itself or whether I just share the disk and allow it to start up, I can bring it up within a few seconds if anything ever happens to the host I'm running on at the moment. And that's it. My virtual router is set up. I can move it between hosts with pretty much no downtime. All I'm going to do now is put some more VMs on this host and see what the capacity is like running a couple of others on there as well. Well, there we are. This has worked awesome. My router has been fantastic since going into this configuration. As I said, don't forget to check out the main video related to this for more details on how well this has all been working. Hopefully some of you guys found this useful, some tips and tricks getting that set up. If you did, please leave a like and let me know in the comments below. If you didn't, let me know what I could do to improve these videos. Don't forget, you can check me out at GuyRobotTV on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks.